Salutations friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video I'm going to be reviewing Tonka 25 from Lilabo. If you'd like to know what I think about this fragrance, then keep watching. We are in the process of hanging the lighting in my office, and then we're going to be building the table, putting in the carpet, and then all the stuff. So I'm still in this room. Also, I know that my upload schedule has been sporadic, like I said a few weeks ago during the process of my um, office remodel. I'm going to be having a very, very limited upload schedule. All of my fragrances are packed and I had pre-filmed a whole bunch of videos and unfortunately the, you know, the film and the audio was not salvageable. So one of those videos was actually a first impression of Tonka 25 from Lilabo and because that was unsalvageable, I decided to wear through my sample and actually give you guys a review. So Tonka 25 from Lilabo is part of their main lineup. It's not part of their city exclusive lineup. It's one of the newer ones. And it's one that I actually really, really enjoyed, but there is something I do need to talk about. So obviously this was sent to me when I made my city exclusives purchase. So this wasn't sent to me to review. This is kind of like a little gift with purchase that gets sent when you make an order from Lilabo. So this is not like a sponsored video or anything like that. Tonka 25 I find to be really beautiful and it has a lot of special nuances in the opening and as it dries down that's kind of like what I want to talk about. This has notes of musk, cedar, tonka bean, vanilla, and orange blossom and styrax. I can never say that one note at all. One thing that I do like about this fragrance is the opening is absolutely fantastic. You get this warm, semi-animalistic, musky, soft, powdery vanilla fragrance. It's really quite beautiful. It smells like sexy, sexy skin. There's a lot of beauty with the cedar and the orange blossom that pairs with this kind of really warm, delicious tonka. And I like that it has like this kind of slightly anomalic muskiness in the background. It kind of elevates it a little bit and makes it smell a little bit special, a little bit different, and I really enjoy that. I think that there's something really sexy about musks, and I find that sometimes they can be overused, a little bit too strong, a little bit too challenging or intimidating, and in this fragrance it smells really nice. It adds a nice blanket, a nice foundation that this beautiful kind of like soft, almost like a sexy skin kind of smelling powdery tonka uh, softness from the vanilla that you get is something that I really really enjoy. Now the biggest issue I have with this fragrance isn't something that I myself dislike. I actually really enjoy it but I could see a lot of people having a real issue with this and that has to do with the dry down. The scent of this is gorgeous in the opening. You have a lot of co-mingling. The sweetness from the orange blossom, the softness from the tonka bean, the beautiful animalic musk the cedar is absolutely fantastic. It adds a nice kind of aromatic, woody kind of foundation for everything else to work off of. It's just really, really fantastic. But after I'd say about two to three hours, a lot of the beautiful kind of soft marshmallowy, aromatic woodiness that you get in the opening that makes it a very sexy and complimentary fragrance kind of disappears to a more kind of musky, anomalic fragrance. And I actually really enjoy the muskiness of this fragrance. I've started, with, I'd say the past like five to six years, really loving musk. And I find that how this fragrance transforms is a really beautiful musky fragrance but i find that it doesn't have a lot of the qualities a lot of the warm sensuality that the opening has it almost completely disappears and that's the problem for most people if you fall in love with the opening you're going to be really disappointed after the first few hours at least from what i've gathered wearing it on my skin and I definitely think that when you're paying a very expensive fragrance, Labo is, I would say, a corporate niche house, and their prices are very expensive, you would hope that the core of what the fragrance is supposed to be, this beautiful kind of tonka with the nuances of woods and florals and vanilla, you would hope that for the entire lifespan, there would at least be remnants of that closer to the end of the fragrance, but unfortunately, it's not. I might be able to pick up little whiffs of cedar and I might get a soft powderiness after about four to five hours, but it's rare. I am left with a beautiful musky fragrance that I really enjoy, but it's not what this fragrance has been intended in regards to its composition. And so I have to say that 
Aside from it being a beautiful fragrance, you will probably be disappointed if this is the scent that kind of disappears on your skin and then you're left with a musky animalic fragrance. Some people, that'll be a positive. I actually really enjoy the musk, so I've been enjoying wearing this fragrance. But I do have to say, if this is the type of fragrance that you're looking to invest in, get a sample first. See if this fragrance develops on your skin a little bit differently. Maybe just all those notes disappear on my skin and on you guys. You're gonna get a lot longer and more beautiful kind of soft sensuality this fragrance has in the opening. Or you could be like me, where it just kind of dissipates after two to three hours. But at the end of the day, I do actually really like this fragrance. I like the beginning, I like the end, but they are completely disjointed and they kind of smell like two different fragrances. So I just wanted to let you guys know that. But that's my thoughts and I'd love to know what you guys think. Do you agree with my assessment? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comment section below. As always guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye!